Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Polycap India's CF524 earning conference call. As a reminder, all participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need any assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gandhar Vatongia, Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer, Polycap India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, moderator. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I hope all of you are staying healthy and safe. I am Gandhar Vatongia, Executive Director and CFO at Polycap India Limited. On this call, we shall discuss the Q3 FY24 results which were approved in the board meeting held yesterday. We will be referring to the earnings presentation, financial results, and financial statements, which are available on the stock exchanges, as well as on the investor relations web page of our website. Joining me today from the management team, we have our chairman and main director, Mr. Indra Jaisinghani, and our head, investor relations, Mr. Chirai Upadhyay. Let me now hand over the call to Indra Bhai for his comments. Good afternoon, everyone. Before we get into the main agenda of this meeting, I would request you intelligence of the discuss company perspective of some recent developments. In the last fortnight of the previous calendar year, the incumbent authority conducted such operations at our manufacturing plants, facility, and offices. Company has cooperated fully in their investigation. Since the conclusion of the search, till date the company has not received any written communication from the IT department regarding the outcome of the search. The company's operations are running smoothly. The entire management team continuously to work wholeheartedly to ensure that the company keeps up on the growth periodically. The law will take its own course, will keep it up our stakeholders posted on the future developments. With that, I turn to the main agenda item. In the midst of robust demand environment, our business has maintained strong growth momentum, achieving the highest ever quarterly revenues during the quarter. Moreover, we achieved the highest third quarter pack, as well as the highest ever nine month revenue and pack in the history of the company. Our expectational achievement highlights the robustness of our education skill, skillfully employed through the utilization of our formidable mar market semi and the advantages market traditions. With this, I would request them to give you a flavor of the macro environment. Thank you. Thank you, Indrabhai. Indian economy has demonstrated exceptional resilience in navigating global uncertainties, a testament to the government's proactive measures and strategic initiatives. The underlying growth momentum is visible in strong GDP growth numbers, expansion in manufacturing and services PMI, robust credit uptake, real estate royalty, increasing steel and cement output, and higher tax collections. The steady pace of growth in digital payments and consumer goods output have also been noticed. Furthermore, we can observe that the increasing capital creation is coinciding with improved debt positions of the corporate sector. Thus, we believe that the stars are aligned for a pickup in capex activity. All the three elements of the capex cycle, housing, government capex, and corporate capex, are now firing and potential for Indian economic growth appears promising with a synchronized momentum across these sectors. Supply and diversification, government strategic initiatives, along with uh, product-linked incentives, schemes, is driving optimism across industries. Data on new project announcements indicate a notable surge in the chemical industry, metal industry, transport equipment industry, and construction materials including the cement industry. The favorable momentum observed in the infrastructure, construction, and power sector leads into the demand momentum for cables and wire sector, which has direct linkage with the growth of these industries. The Q3 
Cables and wire sector performance has been robust over the past several quarters and appears promising for the next many years to come. Against this backdrop, let's delve deeper into polycast performance for, during the third quarter and the first nine months of the current financial year. I would now hand over to Chirayu to take you through the financial performance for the quarter. Thank you, Gandhar. I would request everyone to refer to slide 4 of the earnings presentation. For the quarter ended 31st December 2023, our consolidated revenue grew by 17% year on year on the back of healthy volume growth in domestic wires and cable business. EBITDA grew by 13% year on year, with EBITDA margins at 13.1%. EBITDA margins were sequentially lower during the quarter on account of increase in advertising and promotion spend, which doubled on a quarter on quarter basis to nice growth. Advertising and promotion expenses accounted for 2.1% of net sales in Q3, a notable increase from 1.1% in the previous quarter. During the quarter, we partnered with the International Cricket Council to be the official partner of the ODI Cricket World Cup 2023, launched diverse trending campaigns across multiple media platforms, and engaged with influencers, including electricians, architects, contractors, leaders, and distributors to boost awareness among customers. For 9 and FY24, our advertising and promotion spends were at 4.2% of our B2C top line. In line with our guidance of advertising and promotion spends being in the range of 3 to 5% of the B2C top line every year. A decade breakup of the other income and finance costs have been provided on slide 17 of our earnings presentation. The company registered its highest third quarterly tax of 4.165 million, a growth of 15% year on year. Tax margin stood at 9.6%. Net cash position improved to over 18,000 million from 15,000 plus million in quarter two, while working capital cycle at 51 days was within our company's comfort range of 50 to 60 days. On a nine month basis, our revenue grew strongly by 27% year on year. EBITDA was up by 40% while margin expansion of 120 bits uh, to 13.9%. Margin expansion was achieved through improved gross margin resulting from strategic pricing revision, as well as favorable change in product mix. Profit after tax grew by 46% year on year, with tax margin expanding 130 bits to 10%. As mentioned in the opening remarks, our revenue, EBITDA, and tax for nine months of the, of the financial year are the highest nine monthly numbers in the history of our company. What even more remarkable is that our profitability for the first nine months of this year nearly matches the last year's full year's back number. Moving on to slide 6 of the earnings presentation. During the third quarter, the wires and cables business grew by 18% year on year, with entire growth coming through volume growth. The domestic wires and cables business registered a volume growth of 20% plus, with both distribution and institutional business demonstrating robust performance. Institutional business growth outweighs distribution business growth, albeit on a much lower basis. The growth of cable segment continues to be robust, driven by strong government capex, increased infrastructure activity, growing investments in renewable energy, and a pickup in private capex. Wires growth on a year-on-year -year basis was soft during the quarter due to rising prices, pausing construction activities in certain states due to pollution concerns, and a slowdown in certain states due to state elections. In spite of this, wires registered healthy sequential growth during the quarter. These factors are transient in nature, and we anticipate that demand will improve in the coming months. The demand for residential properties in the country has not only demonstrated remarkable resilience, but also soared tremendously, resulting into both launches and annual sales registering a 10-year high in calendar year 2023. During both calendar year 2022 and 2023, New launches have outnumbered new sales. As the need for wires in a real estate project typically arises towards the end of the second year or early in the third year of construction, the launches announced over the past two years will now begin to generate advantages to a heightened demand for wires in the upcoming years. The international business grew by 22% year on year during the quarter, contributing 6.2% to the company's top line. For nine months 
of the financial year, the contribution from international business to the company's top line is at 8.1%. While the past quarters have seen greatly limited growth, largely on account of transition to the distribution model in the US and impact of the Israel Hamas war on the trade route to Europe by the Red Sea, the company expects international business to exhibit strong performance in quarter four of this financial year as well as beyond. Technical profitability for the wires and cables business remains strong, with EBIT margin at 14%, the higher end of our value range. The sequential declining margin of 70 bits in quarter three of this financial year was on account of lower trade contribution from international business and higher advertising and promotional spend during the quarter. Polycap has been actively contributing to the nation building process for several years. During the quarter, Polycap supplies cables to various national projects spread across renewables, railways, power, infrastructure, different sectors, and many more. The demand environment for the wires and cables business is expected to remain strong for many years to come. As per a recent report, India is likely to spend nearly 143 trillion rupees on infrastructure in the seventh fiscal to 2030, more than twice the amount of about 67 trillion spent in the previous seventh fiscal between 2017 and 2023. With strong demand momentum and new opportunities on the end, the company undertook apex of 636 crores in the first nine months of the financial year. With further apex planned in the quarter four as well, the company will overshoot its target apex for the year to incur 800 to 900 crores of apex in the current financial year. In FY25, the company expects to incur between 6 to 700 crores of apex. Please refer to slide nine. Slide number 8 for an update on the SMEG business. SMEG business has registered a degrowth of 15% year on year in Q3 of FI24, primarily on account of sustained business and consumer demand. Both major verticals of fans and lighting reported degrowth. While fans segment grew sequentially, it exhibited year on year degrowth on account of a higher base of the previous year due to the stock liquidation activities prior to the BWA transition. On a positive note, premium and VIC portfolio of the company is gaining traction, with almost 18% of the sales in the third quarter generated from this segment. The company launched 29 new SCUs in the quarter gone by, all of them in the premium and VIC ceiling science range. Further, the company plans to launch another 28 new SCUs in quarter four, again in premium, VIC and across science range. The silent series of the BLC fans launched by the company about three months back has been very well received. Available in six states currently, the company plans to launch the series in all Indian states within this quarter. With the fan season beginning from Feb onwards, the new launches are expected to add money fully to the SMEG sales for the quarter. The light segment continues its detours, driven by further pricing erosion. During the quarter, pricing correction was in the range of 5 to 6 percent on top of the 20-22% to pricing corrections already witnessed in the previous 15 to 18 months. Festival related demand too was not as strong as originally anticipated. On the other hand, the switches and switches segments performed remarkably well, registering a year-on-year growth. Segmental limits for the SMG business continued to remain in the negative territory during the quarter on account of higher advertising and promotion spend and higher fixed costs in the absence of sales. During the quarter, the company has done a restructuring of its BCC business, merging the SMEG vertical with the power business vertical under the unified business unit head. After assessing the performance of the SMEG business in recent quarters, the company acknowledges that its execution has fallen short of expectations. Consequently, the company has devised a plan of action to address this issue. As the company implements this measure, we anticipate the business to take about four quarters to stabilize and we back on the course path. Let's now move to slide number 10, which gives an update on our other businesses, which largely comprises of our strategic ECC business. We clocked revenue of over 2,000 million in quarter three, a growth of 118% year on year. Profitability grew by 189% year on year, with segmental margin at 17.4%. A new sustainable operating margin in this business is expected to be in high finger digits over mid to long term. So that was the financial update for the quarter and first nine months of the fiscal 2024. Thank you and we are now open for questions.
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ms. Sinandi Salgaukar from Jessie's. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is regarding to the exports. You did mention some of the reasons why the exports has declined uh, on a, as a percentage of sales sequentially. Could you give us a little more color into that and uh, how, uh, as in on what factors do we ex expect the exports to recover going forward? Thanks, Ali. So, as I mentioned in the remark, a couple of reasons contributed to the decline. Uh, first of them is that we are transitioning to a distribution-led model in the U.S. Now, whenever uh, such a change is being made, in the initial few quarters, there are hit and misses that any company has gone through. For example, uh, one, would, one would like to know which are the faster moving SCUs and would like to stop those SCUs in the warehouse of the company. So we are under, undergoing that change right now. We are uh, getting to know which are those fast moving SCUs. Once we have that uh, 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 knowledge, we will then uh, stop up on those things and then the sales will recover. The second uh, uh, reason was uh, the, uh, the war which is ongoing uh, between Israel and Hamas. As a result of this, the Red Sea, which is the main route through which we supply our uh, uh, stock to the European region, that has been uh, blocked. As a result, we have to take an alternate route. What this has done is that it has increased our delivery timeline from what would take initially three weeks. It now takes us six weeks to supply the same uh, stock. As a result, what happens is that whatever business is done in the second half of the quarter, the, the revenue or profitability from the team will be realized in the up, uh, subsequent quarter. So both of these uh, were the uh, primary reasons because of which uh, the past uh, couple of quarters has been relatively limited uh, growth. But we are confident that uh, quarter four, as well as uh, uh, the next financial year, uh, the, the business will recover and uh, we will be uh, able to show a good momentum on that. Got it. Very helpful. Second question is regarding ad spend. Uh, you did mention that you are targeting 3 to 5 percent of your B2C top line every year in terms of ad and promotion spend. So this quarter, that's Q3, uh, would you say this was a bit higher due to the one-off of the, uh, because of the Cricket World Cup? Or do you foresee this as a sustained uh, way of uh, spending in terms of ad spend? And what is the kind of steady state margins you expect? Right. So uh, we will continue with our guidance of spending a, uh, advertising promotion between 3 to 5 percent of the B2C top line. Now, having said that, not all quarters will be similar in terms of spend. There will be few quarters which will be heavy and some quarters which will be light. And that will largely depend on the major events which are ongoing during that quarter. So this quarter was definitely uh, one of the heavy ones. But largely, if you look at the 9M numbers for this financial year, the AMP spend that we've done uh, would be about 4.2% of the B2C top line that we've done this year. So again, uh, largely, I mean, uh, everyone should look more in terms of yearly uh, spend rather than any quarterly spend that they've done. And uh, uh, on that front, we'll be looking at our guided range uh, every year. Understand. And B2C, 35% of your overall sales, right, on an average? <coughs> Uh, it, it would have gone down because B2B have, has performed relatively better this year. So B2B versus B2C would be more towards 70-30 uh, now. Got it. And just last question from my side. Uh, this quarter, uh, the other non-operating income at 71 crores seems to be a bit higher. Any specific reason or any one-off in here? So we had a uh, 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 one-off uh, one income in the form of foreign exchange scheme, but this is uh, something which is uh, uh, because of currency movement and not something that can uh, that will be associated with quarter. So this was a one-off. Got it. Sorry, just one last question from my side. You mentioned that the cable's growth was robust this quarter and wires demand was softer. Any particular reasons you are seeing? And this softer demand is year on year, right? You mentioned it's better QOQ. Yes, uh, so wires did have a uh, uh, good sequential growth. 
Our last year, Q3 was the best quarter for us for wire flows. So as a result of that, the base was uh, uh, higher uh, for this quarter. And as a result, the, uh, the growth might seem a little uh, uh, lesser. But largely, I mean, in the wire market is uh, pretty strong. And we have uh, uh, registered sequential growth in wire flows. Got it. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Atul Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity and congratulations on very strong execution in cables and wire DG. So my question is a little off track, but I, I, I thought I would anyway go ahead and ask it because uh, most of the investors seem to have this question. So obviously we have seen the similar you know, tax cuts uh, on many other companies listed in past, and in most cases it has been uh, resolved, you know, and nothing much has happened to the company, etc. And most likely here the same thing will happen. But what has worried people uh, more in Polycat A is the press release by income tax department, even though the press release does not mention Polycat. Uh, so, what is your take on this? Uh, that this is slightly unusual, and uh, you know, so you know, what is your comment on this? And uh, you know, how does it uh, does it worry you? Does it not worry you? Any color would be helpful. Thank you, thank you so much for your uh, kind words. Uh, you know, as Kendall Bay mentioned a while back, uh, in the month of December, income tax officials uh, visited our. Uh, uh, corporate office as well as few other offices uh, in plant and uh, they conducted search which is a typical session 132 of the income tax search. Uh, as you know search is a slightly longer process because a particular uh, wing of the department is involved initially for search uh, and once they conclude their uh, process which generally takes around two months or uh, in few cases probably more than two months they then provide that report to the assessing officer and then assessing officer takes the final decision um, and communicate to the uh, communicate the final conclusion to the uh, assessee. So, so this is what was uh, what we experienced. I am aware about the press release you are referring to. Uh, I am assuming the department followed its own set of processes uh, and that is why they released that press release. At this stage, since we haven't received anything from the department, we are unable to comment more than what Indra has already uh, covered in his opening remarks. And as uh, we mentioned to the other investors as well, we'll continue to uh, cooperate with the department and uh, and we are looking forward to uh, uh, maintain our focus on the growth and take the company to the near high in the quarters and years to come. Great, thank you, thanks, very clear. And then the last question on the SMEG business. So, I mean, obviously, the, after the distribution region, uh, you know, uh, the environment has turned a little hostile for growth in that business. But if we, like, take out the environment part of it, are you happy with the growth that you are doing in the SMEG business? And because, uh, to be very frank, from outside of the company, we are yet to see the 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 results of the distribution research in the revenue growth number. So, any comment on that would be helpful. Sure, sir. So, uh, we will continue to take such steps uh, wherein we believe that um, uh, such research will help us in the business. While we definitely uh, 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 accepted that, yeah, the execution hasn't uh, gone as per what we had planned out, and that is why we are not uh, addressing this issue by taking uh, a different step. What we are going to be doing internally is that we have now segregated the business into two verticals, B2B and B2C. The B2B business is being uh, taken care of Mr. Bhushan Sani, and the B2C business will be taken care of by Mr. Ishwinder uh, Singh Sani. Uh, uh, Mr. Ishwinder, uh, he will help, have help from uh, various deputy business heads, so we are again helping them with various product level verticals. And that is how we want to proceed on this matter. Uh, while we implement all these changes, it will take us a few quarters, a few four quarters, uh, to make all these changes and for the operations to uh, again run that committee. And that is why we believe that uh, next three to four, four quarters uh, uh, will be required for the business to stabilize and get back on the path to growth. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Renu Bait, IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Factories as well as dealer distributor levels 
Ma'am, your voice is not audible. Can you please repeat? Uh, my question is, um, can we quantify the revenue loss in the third quarter from the domestic business, uh, largely due to the IT rate which we had across our facilities factories and also at the distributors? So that would have definitely impacted the domestic housing buyers as well as uh, um, the domestic uh, revenue uptake for us. So revenue uh, are definitely the end period of the quarter is uh, is the uh, best period in terms of sales. Uh, but it will be difficult for us to quantify what uh, 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 loss would have been there. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, there will be certain uh, uh, sales uh, which generally happens during the distributor's stock of your products, and those that is something that would have just been postponed to the next uh, uh, month. So that we will be able to recoup a part of it as well. But it will be difficult for us to quantify on, on this. Sure. Uh, secondly, on the export side, um, can we share um, how has been the demand from uh, markets other than Europe, which obviously has been impacted because of supply chain, uh, but from US and other pockets of the world where you are also building uh, a bidding in projects, um, and uh, any uh, order book value that we can quantify to share the visibility of uh, the uh, project-driven business in um, the export market? So the demand continues to be good uh, uh, across the geography, and we are uh, 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 trying our best to get as many orders as possible from various different geographies, getting access to food in various different geographies. So that uh, continues to go, to go, uh, go on at our end. For us specifically, as I mentioned, we are in the midst of a transition to the new business model, and that is why there will be some more or the other uh, uh, a, a bit of a slowdown that we are seeing right now. But in terms of demand, there hasn't been any impact uh, globally. Uh, we do have a good order book, but we uh, we we don't disclose order books publicly, so uh, that uh, is not something that I'll be able to uh, disclose on this call. But uh, that's for sure, we have a pretty good order book for uh, uh, exclusive. Sure. So, and currently, at what level would be a factory utilization level for uh, cables? So, cables and wires combined, the factory utilization would be uh, 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 between 70 and 75. Percent. Um, and any um, clarity on the next leg of capacity expansion that we have uh, beyond the uh, next two years? No, so as of now, uh, we've given our guidance for what CPEX we are incurring this year and next year. Uh, and we continue to incur CPEX in terms for expanding our capacity. So even right now in this year, we've expanded our capacity for uh, both uh, cables. Uh, and that is something that we'll continue to do. But uh, uh, for any guidance post uh, uh, next two years, I mean, we'll have to wait for uh, a bit uh, more, a couple of more quarters on that. Got it. And lastly, on the FMEG business, uh, you know, while the cables and wires has been a star performer for us, FMEG has been a bit of a drag. Um, can you quantify certain specific measures um, which you have undertaken apart from change in the leadership to turn around uh, this business over the next four quarters? Um, from that perspective? So, you know, at, at this point of time, uh, uh, it will be difficult uh, for us to give out all this, those points. Uh, over the period of next few quarters, we will be detailing out all the initiatives we are taking uh, in terms of operational series, etc. and if there are any uh, targets that we will be taking uh, in the future. Uh, but yeah, as of now, we wouldn't like to comment on. But uh, does uh, the frequent change in the leadership and the teams in the SMEG portfolio worry you? Because that has been one of the ail, uh, ailing factors for this business over the last few years. Uh, so does that uh, disturb you in terms of the strategic priorities and the initiatives that you have been taking in this uh, segment? So, Renu, as you know, uh, we are in SMEG business since last 10 years or so, and we have had exit at the leadership table. Uh, but uh, for us, we are one of the, uh, you know, emerging challenging brand on SMEG. At times in life, you have to take up a stop, uh, reflect back and see what you need to do next. And that is what we have experienced in the last couple of quarters. We practically have the entire blueprint in place. We have the leadership in place. And uh, uh, the second line uh, under the leadership uh, team is being recruited. I think uh, at this stage, as uh, you mentioned, we would not like to diverge everything what we are trying to do, but just give us one or two quarters. Hopefully, once the, uh, uh, once the tire hits the road, probably we would be able to talk about it to get greater details. But uh, FABG was and continues to be a focus area, and we firmly believe that this will add lot of value to all of us as a company as well as to our stakeholders. So, uh, thank you, team, and all the best. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. I just have um, two broad questions. <clears throat> First is on the cable and wire business. Uh, considering the demand environment we have, right, both from the domestic and export market, um, right, and the variety you have in terms of offering specially in cables, um, you know, and, and the business uh, the profile going ahead, do you want to um, review and reassess and tell us um, the profitability, um, you know, direction for cable and wire business? I understand the growth is still going to be very strong, but any comment on profitability? That's my first question. Sure. Uh, so, uh, on cables and wires, we have always uh, maintained uh, our guidance in terms of arbitrary margins to be in the range of 11 to 13 percent. We will continue with that guidance. Uh, uh, as, and again, on uh, on the scale front, we mentioned that if we are able to uh, operate at a better scale, 12 to 14 percent of arbitrary margin is, is something that we should be able to realize. As of now, uh, we are operating at a, uh, a better scale, and hence we are uh, uh, seeing that our margins on the cables now are, are around 14 or uh, 13 percent. So, but uh, uh, until uh, uh, such kind of operation level is available to us, we will be, we'll be able to continue to operate at this uh, margin gain. But uh, uh, if you are putting uh, uh, numbers into your model, you should consider as 11 to 13 percent as the uh, guided gain for the system. Okay, sir. I am assuming and implying there is no change in the cost structure of polycare. Uh, you know. Thank you. Um, second question is maybe uh, you know, uh, if uh, we could be helped on SMEG. First of all, um, I really appreciate and thank you, uh, you know, the management uh, for acknowledging the, uh, you know, uh, SMEG business growth path where Polycap needs to do better. Um, but um, from a two-three year view, uh, do you think uh, Polycap needs to be more aggressive and more passionate and more uh, committed about SMEG business because that is the only um, segment where we have not had any significant inorganic path. Um, you know, uh, most of our competition has followed that and for maybe new product or new market geography. So that's the form of and, you know, um, and what kind of, uh, what kind of rhetoric can we expect in the next few years? And thank you. And maybe, and uh, then that can also take Thank you. Right. So, so SMEG, uh, for the SMEG business, we have been and we continue to be very passionate. We uh, have been taking various steps within Project Lee so that we should uh, we, uh, we are able to grow ahead of where the market goes is at. Uh, in terms of inorganic growth opportunities, we continue to evaluate such opportunities uh, uh, practically every day. Uh, if and when we do have such a uh, 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 opportunity which is available at a valuation that is acceptable, we might even go ahead and uh, uh, go for this in order to grow. But yeah, I mean, we continue to evaluate all uh, steps, both internal as well as uh, in organic growth, so that we, sh uh, we are able to uh, scale up the SMEG business and uh, uh, grow ahead of the market. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Shiraju, and good luck to the entire team and management. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Archer from JM Financials. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, team. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, the question is, uh, you know, in terms of volume growth, you mentioned about 20% uh, growth in volumes for domestic uh, segment uh, in wires and cables. Uh, possible to break it up in terms of cables and wires? Is it like cables is around 30% and wires is kind of 9-10% or something like that? So cables would have definitely grown faster than wires, and wires uh, volume growth would have been single digits, and uh, to that extent we can quantify the cable growth as well, which would be a higher than that. Understood. So secondly, uh, you know, with respect to uh, the pricing, um, you did mention that uh, the higher margins are to do with the strategy, price revisions, uh, uh, and the product mix. Uh, can you help us understand in terms of the price premium broadly? I know it will vary SK to SKU, uh, industry to industry, but is it fair to say that our uh, premium uh, price uh, uh, premium to the peers would be anywhere between two to five percent? Would that be a fair assumption? Yeah, that's a fair assumption. Understood. 
and would that be true for both wires and cables or it is more so for cables as, as it would it would be two for cables on wires as then couple of other large pieces we uh, generally operate in similar price understood and uh, uh, you know you you mentioned about the capacity utilization 70 75% was that for 3q or was it for 9 months third third quarter third quarter so uh, you know uh, given the squs what you have is this a peak utilization or you can actually scale it uh, scale it up to 90 95% as well so we can go as high as 95% in terms of utilization but the idea is never to wait i to reach that level and continue to do capex every year so that uh, we have enough and more capacity available to cater to the increased demand that is currently visible in the uh, in the country understood and just last one by chirayu uh you know um, you mentioned about the capex um uh, what percentage capacity will it add to you know will it be 10% will it be 20% uh you know and and uh, uh given the robustness of the demand or the outlook um uh, could there be a possibility of any substantial revision to this uh, you know uh, uh, just uh, you know from a, from a next couple of quarter perspective could there be a possibility so uh, we we are doing expansion not only in domestic cables but also ofc cables or like our cables for export or special purpose cables so it will be difficult for me to right now give you what percentage growth in terms of capacity will be there for each of them but definitely as i mentioned we we wouldn't wait for us to reach 90 95% of utilization we would want to be ahead of uh, uh, time and uh, uh, go ahead with that uh, expansion as of now as again we've guided we will be incurring between 800 to 900 crores of capex this year and next year we we expect to incur between 600 to 700 crores of capex uh, but uh, uh, i mean we are very dynamic at our end if there are in, uh, enough and more opportunities which are available uh, uh, to be captured uh, we, we wouldn't shy away from being additional capex got it uh, thank you i wish you all the best thank you all. thank you our next question is from the line of pravin chahai from pl india you go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question uh, so the first question is uh, related to the wire and cable uh, how much if you can quantify how much is the wire contribution for the quarter and nine months and also in that you had made a statement that the pause in the construction and also the price hike uh, has uh, led to the uh, lower growth for the wire so how much is the price hike uh, is that So the price hike, I, I, I was referring to the copper price increase that has happened. Uh, if you look at uh, last four to five months, but in general, uh, uh, at our end, uh, the price hike as well as the price increase what we've done on a on a net basis in Q3, the contribution from uh, value increase uh, or decrease was uh, made. The entire growth that we've been able to achieve is because of the volume growth. And contribution is can give uh, third quarter and nine months. So we used to operate around uh, 70, 30 in terms of cables and wires mix uh, because cables have grown faster uh, this year. Uh, that uh, the cables contribution would have gone up by a couple of hundred basis points. So is this for a nine month? Maybe a third quarter is a lesser than that. Sim- similar uh, story for the third quarter. Oh, okay. And one uh, clarification related to the gain and loss on the reduction of uh, investment. which looks a uh, little on the higher side for this quarter uh, so is that uh, something one off uh, and it will not come back uh, in the coming quarter is it like that so there were couple of uh, line items one was a gain from redemption of mutual funds that we've done again that is something that we continue to do every quarter we have very good cash on balance sheet depending on where we invest and when we believe that we are uh, uh, receiving the maximum returns we uh, we continue we continue to do that redemption But it will be difficult to quantify whether this is this number is something that will be uh, uh, there every quarter or not. And again, the uh, the second line item was uh, the uh, the exchange difference uh, uh, that uh, uh, the gain that we were able to realize because of uh, favorable movement in currency. And again, that is something uh, we can't comment on where the currency movement will be. Uh, again, so that is uh, 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 you can consider it as, as a one-off, and uh, uh, we'll have different uh, trajectory every quarter on that. Point. Okay, thank you that last question on the export uh, so why you why side if i look at there is a good uh, growth even the contribution is a lower the growth is on the why side for the export is a good and uh, also in the press release you had said that the 
company anticipated a healthy performance uh, in the business in the Q4 and the beyond. Uh, so, is that a, a reflection that you have a very strong order book? Uh, fair to say that. Right. So, as I mentioned, we do have a pretty good, uh, um, pretty strong order book for us on the export business. And again, as I mentioned, there is some form of delay that happens when uh, when we are right now supplying our goods to the European uh, region. So again, that postponement of sales uh, has something is something that played out this quarter. So both of this combined, uh, uh, we expect that Q4 and beyond should be good for uh, the export business. Thank you for answering my questions. All the best. Thank you. Our next question is from Srinidhi from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one question from mine. Uh, so the increase in the capex guidance. Uh, may I ask what is really driving this increased capex, uh, and and which product categories this capex is going? So Srinidhi, uh, uh, because of the in- better opportunities that we are seeing across all the sectors. So we believe that we should be doing the additional capex ahead of time so that we have enough and more capacity available to capture this demand. Again, we are doing it across all the different types of cables. So as I mentioned, domestic cables, OFC cables, cables which we are exporting, uh, special purpose cables, etc. So uh, against all of this, and again, and also the EHV uh, plan, etc. So all of this combined, we are doing this uh, additional capex. Right. And a second question, if I may, uh, one of the uh, drivers for superior margin we have been alluding for recent quarter has been superior product mix. Uh, may I ask you give more color on this aspect? So, uh, when you look at domestic cables, there are two different types of cables, SDC and LDC, high density load and low density. Uh, LDC cables are generally better margin uh, cables and we've been able to improve our mix more towards LDC. So, LDC has grown faster. Uh, uh, even in uh, exports, uh, there are different types of cables which are towards different margins and we can be able to change the mix more towards those products which help us make better margins. So both of these combined has helped us on the margin. Right. Uh, thank you for answering my question and all the best. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ashish Chain from Macaroni. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, I uh, Hello, I'm Yes, sure. Yes, yes. Yeah, so today I have two questions. One is uh, a receiver, which is actually adding how fungible is it across products from home, uh, or is it then dedicated for a particular type of form? So, for, uh, for example, the facility which is there for OSC will be utilized only for OSC. Uh, the, uh, the facility which is used for manufacturing cables which are exported, again, that is not fungible. But uh, within the domestic cables, uh, we have that uh, fungibility available. Okay, okay. And second, my second question was, you know, on this FAB uh, uh, So why, given we are now thinking of restructuring uh, the business or to you know, rework, what are the rationals behind dumping of advertising costs so much uh, in this quarter? Because really, an exclusive quarter with the loss opportunity, it might be for us coming with an easy function. Or is it like more tinkering kind of stuff that we are doing, or, or are there like media involved or how we do uh, the, uh, the SME side? So, actually, the advertising and promotion spends are not only done just for the SME business, it also uh, is done rightly for the buyer business. So, again, we had to continue to spend on that part. And again, uh, uh, advertising and branding activities are not something that we can stop for uh, one year, start next year, whenever we want to rank up that business. It is something that has to be done continuously. That is how we will continue to be in the minds of the customer. So, uh, 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 and hence, we will continue to do this uh, AMP spend, which is 8 to 5 percent of Bluetooth offline every year. Right. And I think we are kind of looking at some measures that we've all what we are doing. Uh, just to understand what is uh, the target to change or change in that? I think, I thought you were not audible. Uh, uh, in FMEG, what are we looking to do? No, no, I'm saying FMEG, what are the main, like, what are we looking to change because this has been a work for us for the last few years also and again we are coming back and looking at the market and what is the target for the next few years? Right. So, so what we are looking to do is looking at the market and 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 looking at the market 
So as Gandhav mentioned uh, a few minutes back, we are right now in the initial uh, 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 part of that process of making all these changes. Uh, give us a couple of quarters time. Uh, uh, once we have all of those from us, we'll be out with uh, detailed, uh, uh, detailed information of what exactly the, are we trying to do differently and what exactly we have done to do. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Alok Deshpande from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, two questions from my side. Uh, one, uh, you know, in the next 20, 18 months, uh, we have, uh, you know, a couple of years coming up with new capacities in cable. I just wanted to understand that, have you in the past uh, ever seen that when new capacities come up in the sector, it has uh, impact on pricing? And do you see uh, a situation where, you know, it can, because of the added capacity in the market, it can impact uh, your pricing, especially in cable? Uh, so, yeah, look, we're through. Um, over the next 12 to 18 months, we'll be seeing a lot of our peers adding capacity. Historically, what has been our experience is that while there might be some uh, uh, pricing uh, revisions or, uh, uh, that would be done, but they are they're not uh, material in nature. In general, the industry has always acted rationally. There has never been an irrational pricing that any, any peer has undertaken, and uh, we believe that that is something that will continue to happen in the future as well. Anyway, the demand uh, momentum in the country in the various infrastructure and the various sectors is so strong that uh, enough and more capacity uh, is needed from uh, all manufacturers domestically. So we don't believe there's going to be any irrational competition to gain market share with. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Mr. what are the two, three product lines which you think, uh, you know, which, uh, where, where, you know, you need to sort of rework the most, uh, within SMDG in terms of, uh, either their current sizes or where you think the maximum potential is? So, Alok, uh, we, we are focusing a lot on switches and switch gears products within the SMEG, uh, uh, business. We believe we have, uh, enough and more potential to be, uh, one of the big players in those, uh, product categories. Uh, over the past one, one and a half years, we've set up in-house manufacturing as well as expanded manufacturing uh, capacities wherever uh, uh, we were required. We are working on a uh, uh, price setting strategy wherein we are work trying to have our presence across price points. We are trying to improve our distribution channel and try to, uh, trying to enter as many geographies as possible. Uh, we are even trying to uh, do a lot of cross-selling uh, between uh, wires and uh, switch gears. So through all of this, we believe we should be able to do uh, uh, much better on switches and switch gears in the future than what we have done in the past. And uh, the contribution uh, from those two product categories will increase as a percentage of the SMEG phase in the future. Is there any sense on, uh, any, any sense you can give us on what that contribution is? Ballpark uh, currently, is it very low or is it, uh, is it uh, becoming, uh, becoming meaningful? Uh, any, any color on that? So, as of now, combined switches and switches would contribute and make things uh, to the overall SMG top line. Understood. Understood. Uh, thanks a lot for your uh, responses and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Natasha Jane from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So, why my first question is on the wires and cable segment. So, the segment volume is grown by 17% and you said volume is grown by 20%, right? The wires and cable stock line has grown by 18% and the entire growth has been achieved through volume growth. So, just wanting to understand copper prices have begun in that process. So, was there a bigger contribution from something like an Athera wire, which is probably a lower margin component in the product basket? So, Atira wires are not lower margin products. Atira, on Atira, we make similar margins to our other product categories. Atira is something that we've introduced a couple of years back, and that is uh, something that we introduced to capture the unorganized market, largely tier 3 to 5 towns of the uh, cities of the country. Uh, Atira is seeing pretty good uh, penetration in these geographies, and uh, we believe that going ahead, I mean, uh, the contribution from Atira wires will continue to increase. But uh, on the margin profile, they are similar to other uh, wires that we have. There is no, uh, they are not of lower margin. Understood. Um, 
my second question sir i is on the efi facility where are we on that are we on track to commission it by fourth quarter of fi sir so you guided that was the efi manufacturing plan will be operational by late fi 26 and as of now we are on track to get the time understood and lastly in terms of the fmg specially lighting while i understand volume erosion uh, value erosion was there what about the volume did it pick up in quantity or has that also been a drag so around the diwali festival there was a bit of a pick up but it wasn't on the expected lines so again uh, if you look at uh, uh, year on year basis uh, still the uh, volume would have uh, uh, not been uh, uh, in the growth category uh, uh, Understood. And lastly, one more question, sir. Are you, while I understand that in quarter three the amount of ads spent was high, obviously because of the one of that World Cup sponsor there. Then, is it possible for you to quantify as to because of those ads spent, what is the kind of revenue that we've seen through happening after that? Sorry, uh, uh, what do you want me to quantify? So, in terms of the ad spend that you did during the World Cup season, how has that, you know, positively impacted your sales? Is it possible to show some color on that because the ad spend was very high, right? So, are we seeing those kind of sales that we anticipated because of this ad spend that we did? So, the data this are very initial days. Uh, as I mentioned, this is something that we have to do every quarter of every year. Definitely, we are seeing that level of improvement in terms of visibility. And uh, our capturing of the mindset of customers. So now customers are pretty much uh, very well aware of all the product categories and uh, that we have on the SMEG uh, uh, as offering. But again, uh, and it will be very very difficult to quantify what exactly has sales expense translated to in terms of sales. This is something that will continue to help us in the long run, and we will continue to spend uh, every year on advertising and promotion uh, in, in the on the three to five percent things that we've covered. All right. Thank you so much, Raj. All the best. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhijit Akela from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. Um, first, just on the uh, revenue growth and uh, margin uh, profile. Uh, so, I mean, this quarter was a bit soft on the back of uh, you know whatever issues we discussed. But next quarter, should we expect an acceleration in terms of both growth and uh, maybe margin versus these levels? Right. So, Abhijit, uh, uh, we believe the second half of this year will be better than the first half of this year. That is something that we have guided, and we believe that will continue to happen. It will, uh, it will be again very difficult to quantify that, and we never give out yearly guidances. So, uh, we will be again uh, diverging from uh, that practice. But uh, as I mentioned, the second half should be better than the first half of this. Okay. Uh, on the ESG capex, so uh, with Group Cable, could you just quantify how much of the uh, capex has already been incurred on that project? Uh, so as, at this point of time, we wouldn't like to uh, give out the details of those capex. Uh, still, the the plant becoming operational is still uh, quite far away. So uh, when we are near to that time period, we'll be able to quantify. We'll be uh, quantifying the capex that we've incurred and the various other parameters in uh, in terms of what the revenue uh, expectations we have and so on and so forth. All right. Uh, and then just to clarify, the SMG uh, merger with power uh, is that with the power cable business, and uh, so you know what exactly part of the thought process underlying that. So power vertical uh, comprises of wires, which is in this case. It's not uh, uh, it has no relation with the cables. Cables is uh, 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 what we uh, call internally is more B to B in terms of what I mentioned in terms of different verticals. So this will uh, this will be a merger of uh, wires, which is in this case, with the uh, the other FMG uh, product category, such as fans, lights, and other appliances. Okay, understood. Fine. Just one last thing from my side. Uh, The you know main allegation made in the uh, uh, press release by the PIB was regarding the you know unaccounted cash transaction. Uh, so would you like to formally sort of deny that uh, you know either the company or the promoter group is involved in any such uh, you know cash transaction? Yeah. So as I mentioned a while back, uh, Abhijit, we haven't received anything from the income tax department so far. Uh, you know, whatever filings we were supposed to do, clarifying our position, we have already done that to the stock exchange. 
And since we haven't received anything from the department so far, the operations are going on and at this stage, uh, there is no incremental data points which are available on which we can uh, or which we should, uh, uh, on which we should provide our comments. Okay, well, thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Rahul Agarwal from Incre Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, you know, on the entire episode, whatever has happened, just wanted to clarify, and I think the previous participant was also looking for the same answer. Purely from a policy perspective, I don't, you know, I am not uh, bothering much about what income tax thinks. But from your own perspective, in terms of your own internal processes, you know, there were three, four things which were mentioned about, you know, subcontracting expense, logistics, and, you know, sales. The distributors and dealers obviously are free to do whatever wrong they want to do in life. But from polycap perspective, from internal process perspective, could you highlight certain steps or certain things which you have done over the years uh, to get your, uh, you know, larger distributors and dealers not to engage into such activities? Because, you know, I've did some checks around this. My sense is there are other companies uh, and peer sets who are also listed who have actually gone ahead so much that they've involved their bankers also to ensure that distributors, dealers are part of the same agreement when they do channel finance and they are also going through a lot of uh, strictness and compliance. Uh, so just from that perspective, that's my first question. If you would highlight your own internal processes of those, you know, the channel not getting into such activities. Please. Thank you, Rahul. You know the industry uh, and, of course, the company. We are the pioneer as far as channel financing is concerned. Um, we do almost 80 to 90 percent of our business through dealers and distributors, and out of them, probably 80 to 90, and of the business is more than 90 percent of the business is done through channel financing. Uh, most of it is uh, without any recourse. And what you are narrating to is what uh, we actually introduced to the industry and we are very happy and glad that we are continuing with the same. On the ethics and governance, uh, we have been uh, extremely, extremely cautious and fully compliant. Uh, you know about the pedigree of the compliances we have, right, from the board structure to the auditors to so on and so forth. And since all the audit reports are already in public domain, uh, I don't think uh, at this stage we need to offer any additional comments. As I mentioned to the previous uh, participant as well, that we haven't received anything from the income tax department in terms of the conclusion on the search proceedings. As and when we receive any intimation uh, from the department, we'll proactively come back to the stock exchange and notify. Uh, and since we haven't received anything, I don't think uh, it requires any further deliberation at this stage. Sure, sure. So, you know, obviously they'll come back with a notice if they have any issues. But from your side, could we assume as shareholders uh, that from your side all the standard practices are being followed and there is whatever allegations are made are completely false? Can I make that statement? You can certainly make all the statements. I am saying that I haven't received any, we haven't received anything from the department. As and when we receive anything from the department, we'll be happy to, uh, review that, conclude that, and comment on that. As far as our compliance are concerned, I've already explained as a response to previous answer uh, that we are the pioneer as a channel financing is concerned in the industry. We have been following that and, uh, we are very confident on our governance and processes. Perfect. Just two smaller questions. Uh, on FMEG, uh, since your, uh, the guidance is essentially that it will take another four quarters to stabilize this business uh, because of what internal changes is going to happen, should we expect revenue growth next year or is it going to be similar what we saw fiscal 24, 23, and 25 will look similar? Uh, so, uh, now you know our FMEG business, uh, we have had, uh, you know, difficulty in uh, actually realizing the potential in the last few quarters of FMEG business and that is why we have decided that for next four quarters, we will probably do what we wanted to do and implement it in a manner which is acceptable to all of us internally. Uh, I would expect you to give us a couple of quarters uh, so that we are able to implement what we intend to implement and then we will probably give you more guidance on FNEG, any which way, you know, in terms of the contribution of top line of FNEG to their total business, at this stage is not necessarily very material. Uh, so, if you can give us a couple of questions, I think that would be a great help. 
get it. And lastly, on this CapEx, I think multiple questions have been asked. You know, essentially what we all are looking for is to understand where is the capacity getting increased. Now, obviously from your perspective, it's getting increased across products. For us, <coughs> sorry. For us, you know, I understand EHP is something which you don't want to disclose too early in the cycle. I understand that. But if you could elaborate a bit on uh, whether it's volume-wise or revenue-wise, like what kind of revenue increase should we see in terms of your investment done today? And which are these products? It will help us all understand this CapEx better. So I think the effort is towards that. Whatever Gandhar you can help us understand on this call will be really helpful. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, you know, let's do it this way. Uh, I think it's a very good observation and thanks for highlighting that. Allow us time uh, to come back to you with a more holistic uh, picture on the impact of the current capex and the potential uh, and the current capex on the top line and bottom line and we probably provide more color in our subsequent calls. Uh, but uh, broadly what Chirayu earlier alluded to, our thought process is not to get to 90 or 95 percent utilization and before that we should be able to have the capacity. But I think a most of your suggestions will come back to you in the subsequent call and uh, tend to provide you additional color. I really appreciate that and uh, thanks for answering all my questions. Thank you. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of the day. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kantha Sutongia for closing comments. Thank you so much for uh, taking our time. Uh, we know that these are, uh, for many of us, are difficult times for the company. Since the time of listing, you have supported us. We are looking forward to your support. We never ever uh, did anything which would uh, put anyone in a wrong spot and we are confident on our compliance. Uh, we look forward to come back to you in the next quarter and provide you additional updates. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Thank you. On behalf of Polycap India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.